I'm Brian Lilly. Allegations, charges, and the rule of law, that is the topic of tonight's byline. Jeon Gameshi is facing four charges of sexual assault, one of choking a woman in relation to the allegations that have been leveled against him in the media for the past month. Gameshi surrendered to Toronto police this morning. He appeared in court this afternoon to face the charges. Now, for all the nasty things you've heard about Gameshi, from being a bad boss to being a bad date, a really bad date, well, one that would hit women for his sexual gratification. This is how it should be. Charge the man, prosecute, but also allow him to answer the charges and provide a defense, and then have him judged according to the law. That will now happen for Gomeshi. Public opinion may already be set, but the courts can now have their say. Meanwhile, our MPs in Ottawa continue to fumble what is a very serious issue. In early November, at the height of the national furor surrounding the ongoing Gameshi allegations, Liberal leader Justin Trudeau abruptly threw two sitting MPs out of his caucus over allegations of inappropriate conduct. Given the seriousness of the allegations, I have suspended the MPs from our caucus and have asked the Speaker of the House of Commons to investigate further and to resolve the matter. Now, since then, there's been lots of chatter about what Scott Andrews and Massimo Pacetti are accused of doing, what they might have done, and, well, frankly, lots of speculation on who these women are making the allegations. The NDP has expressed its displeasure with Trudeau making the whole situation public, saying that's not what the two women involved wanted. Now, since then, there have been calls for the women to reveal their identities. They haven't. Most media outlets have determined the identities, and they've interviewed at least one of the women, but they've chosen not to reveal I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I will abide by that for now. It was, after all, only one of the New Democrat MPs that started all this, approaching Justin Trudeau, uh, not to tell her story, but that of her friend, the other MP, as she sat near the Liberal leader. So that started this whole thing. And since then, not much has been revealed. Then yesterday, a story in Huffington Post. NDP MP breaks silence on allegations against Liberal MPs. That was the headline yesterday in Huffington Post. In the article, which described how this all began, the MP, speaking anonymously with HuffPo, claimed that Massimo Pacetti had forced himself on her back in March. And then this line jumps out. It was sex without explicit consent, she said. To me, ladies and gentlemen, that's a claim of rape, a claim that has to be taken seriously. But the MP didn't go to police, citing a sexual assault that happened to her as a teen and a lack of police action at that time. I understand women being reluctant to go to the police, but rape is a serious charge. Sexual assault is a serious charge, and, well, it shouldn't be made lightly. I don't know how else, how else you can take a claim that there was sex without consent. But then, throughout the day, she was doing more interviews with other media outlets, and it was revealed that the MP, well, what she meant was she didn't say no, but she didn't say yes, and it came out that she may have given Pacetti a condom. Now, Pacetti, I should point out, still denies all of this. But let me just pause for a moment. We have a serious allegation and then a claim of a condom being provided. That claim first coming from a Canadian press report. Here's the important part. During a confidential meeting with the Liberals and NDP whips, multiple sources have told the Canadian press that the woman acknowledged she did not publicly say no to Pacetti and that she provided a condom. In the interview, she refused to comment on those details. Now, our own David Aiken interviewed this woman. He asked her about the condom claim. She simply refused to answer. This raises so many troubling points. Let me just say that if she did provide Pacetti with a condom and after joining him for a drink in his hotel room did have sex with him without saying no or, or stop, then that's not sexual assault. It's not rape. I would argue that handing a man a condom as he makes moves on you is a form of consent. You might regret it later, but it's still consent. But there's another troubling aspect here. How did Canadian press get that information? If only the party whips and the leaders' offices knew that detail, how did it get to CP? My guess is the Liberals leaked it to CP, which means this serious issue is being played for political gain to attack the credibility of the new Democrat MP. Two men are having their reputations, possibly their families destroyed by untested allegations, innuendo, and so far no charges have been laid. No formal resolution process is there. There's no chance for them to tell their side of the story. And one of the women involved, one with very serious allegations to make, is now having her credibility attacked for political gain. This is not how our elected officials should behave. Now, in fairness, I know many MPs, probably most, do take this issue seriously. And some even warn me 
at the start that there was something odd about this story. Things didn't sit right. Well, now there are several things that are odd. Just as Gian Gameshi will get his day in court to face the allegations against him, these allegations in Parliament either must be tested in some way or tried in some way, some due process given to all involved, or they have to be dropped and forgotten. Otherwise, all we have is a number of hurt people, men and women, with smeared reputations and a public institution to drag down into the mud. Doesn't sound like justice to me. And that's the byline. That is the scene in a Toronto courtroom as Gian Gomeshi came out with his lawyer, Marie, Marie Heinen, who said that she will not answer questions. Mr. Gomeshi, she said, will be pleading not guilty. We will defend and respond to those allegations fully and directly in a court of law. It is not our practice to litigate matters in the media. What we have to say will be said in court. Warren Kinsella joins us now from Toronto. Warren. Uh, Gomeshi facing five different charges. We've got uh, four counts of sexual assault. One count, I'm calling it choking. It's um, essentially trying to, to stop someone from leaving. Uh, your thoughts on that? Before we get to the MPs, your thoughts on what happened with Gomeshi today? Well, that last one is the most serious one. It's one actually I, uh, in my time in law school, and I did a lot of criminal law, um, I wasn't familiar with, so I went and looked it up. Um, so he is facing potentially life imprisonment for that one. So it's a very serious charge. So are the sexual assault ones. But he is facing a battery of allegations and, of course, a number of, of complainants, as you pointed out. So um, it's going to be something when this one lands in court. Now, the, if we can just bring up the uh, Toronto Police Service's uh, comment from earlier today. He did surrender to police, but there is the actual charge. Overcharge, overcoming resistance choking. That's how they described it. And that is the one that you say is very serious. It does carry a sentence of a, up to life in prison, but even if he's convicted, it's doubtful that would be the sentence is my guess. Yeah, as far as we know, he does not have a criminal record. Um, he hasn't, uh, we do know that he hasn't been in this kind of trouble criminally before, but that uh, woman who's standing beside him there in the, in the picture, um, Marie Heinen, is, she's actually just up the the street from the Sun studio here where I am right now. She is one of the best criminal defense lawyers in this country. Her partner, full disclosure, is a guy who I've worked with in the past, Scott Hutchinson, and they are just legal dynamite. So uh, the one bit of good news that Jean Gomeshi has had in the past month or so is he's got exactly... He's got a good the, lawyer. He's got the best lawyer you can get. Okay, so he's in the system now. This is the due process I was talking about. It, you heard my frustration. It must be frustrating for you. You're a political animal. You've worked on the Hill. You've worked around MPs. You know there's good MPs, there's bad MPs. This is a circus, what's going on with what I think are very serious allegations, a very serious issue, and you've got leaks to attack someone's credibility, charges without any process. What are your thoughts uh, about a month into this now? I agree with many of the things you had to say, and it was actually the juxtaposition that you did of Gomeshi and the situation on the Hill is a good one. Because, you know, Gomeshi, maybe this is something else he can be thankful for. He at least has been charged in a court of law. On Parliament Hill, as many people are probably unaware, many of our laws stop at those gates as you step onto the Hill. You can't execute a search warrant on Parliament Hill. You can't do many of the things that many of the rest of us are subject to in the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. And that's why it has been just the Wild West. It's been the OK Corral legally with respect to these two liberal MPs well, or former liberal MPs. And so what this, the point you made you is know, right. With the Pichetti case, if, this ha if what is alleged to have happened happened in his hotel room, that's something that police could take up. But the MP says, look, I, I, I don't want it to go to the police. Uh, but you've got... The allegations are out there. I think Massimo Pichetti is owed some, t some sort of, uh, of ability to either clear his name or face the charges and face the music if, uh, if he's guilty of what uh, is claimed. It's a principle of law called natural justice. You're entitled, natural justice is the foundation for our common law. It's the foundation for all of U.S. law as well. And it holds two things. Number one, you are f you're entitled to a hearing without bias. And number two, you're entitled to a hearing where both sides get heard. 
And that's the problem with what's taking place on the Hill. Nobody's alleging bias. It's just there's no hearing. There's mm -hmm. just these allegations flying around. The NDP, and you know, pardon me for saying this, it's made me a little sick to my stomach this morning because like, just 24 hours ago, they were saying, rightly, that we need to protect the victims, just as you did, and we need to ensure that the victims are not further victimized. Then they go around and do a media tour with everybody, including us, Canadian Press, The Star, Globe, La Presse, Canadian Press, like every news organization around, the uh, alleged victim has been going around giving interviews. Well, That's I, not the way the system's supposed to work. There may have been some other leaks and some strong arming that related to that, that led to that. And that, from my understanding, her first media interview with Huffington Post was not arranged by the NDP. They didn't know about it, and that alerted them to the fact that they better work with her and get her out to speak to other media outlets. So there's a lot of backroom stuff going on here, a lot of what you see in campaigns. And I don't think that when you're dealing with this issue, campaign politics should enter into it. This should be above partisanship. Yeah, and, it, and it, it, like Mulcair has flatly contradicted himself. Not 48 hours ago, he said the victims have a, vi quote, very strong desire for, conf for confidentiality, and everybody can understand that. And then 48 hours later, they're doing a media tour. It was almost like they're promoting a book. So you can't have it both ways, mm. number one. And, but number two, the thing that's most serious is the point that you were making. You know, Parliament Hill should not be a lawless zone where people are allowed to conduct themselves in any way they want and sexually harass whoever they want. You know, even Jean Gameshi is entitled to a hearing in a court of law. Well, that should be taking place here as well. So I second your motion. We need to have a process in place on Parliament Hill to deal with exactly the kind of situation we've got going on up there today. All right, Warren, talk to you soon. Thank you, sir.